This episode of Sojino's Best is brought to you by Jack Threads. Hey, what's up guys, Sojino's Best here. Here's my review of the brand new Sony PS Vita. This little bad boy right here is supposed to give you an awesome, awesome gaming experience while on the go. So I'm gonna talk about the hardware, I'm gonna talk about the software, talk about the games and everything else in between. So it's gonna jump right into it with the hardware. Now the Vita is a very sexy, well-designed device. I like everything with it as far as the looks. It's not that heavy at all, but it is right there on the verge of being uncomfortable if you want to carry this thing around in your pockets. It's a little bit too long for that. Uh, but overall, I think it feels very solid. I think it will be able to survive a couple drops or two if you do happen to drop that. I'm not going to test that in this video. On the front of the Vita, you will find the D-pad and also to just the regular standard action buttons that you come in love with PlayStation controllers. And also the Vita does have dual analog sticks. It's going to be really great for first-person shooters. However, I do wish the analog sticks were just a little bit bigger for my taste and to the size of the analog sticks you will also find these speaker grills where the speakers aren't the loudest there'll be a lot enough to get the job done but if you do have a lot of background noise um, these speakers may have problems keeping the the audio up to your liking as well and the Vita sports a five inch oled touchscreen on the front which looks very very nice has awesome viewing angles and with the resolution of 960 by 544 it's really going to make your games and other media look really good now moving to the top of the video, you'll find these shoulder buttons, which are really good. And also you'll find the power button, the volume buttons, and also the little slot to put in your, your game cards. On the bottom, you'll find the headphone jack and the charging port. And also the Vita does sport two cameras, one in the front and one in the back. Now both of these cameras are VGA, so no HD here. So you're not going to be recording you know, <laughs> your home movies with this thing. But it will provide for very cool gaming opportunities for augmented reality, where basically it will overlay... Uh, a game to whatever your camera sees so if you're in the room you'll have people fighting on the floor or fighting and doing other things inside of the room or explosions going on to make it feel like all that stuff is happening right there next to you so that, that's primarily why these cameras are in there so i can't expect too much for the quality of the cameras does have one trick up its sleeve. On the back, you'll find a touchpad panel. It's going to be cool for games like Little Deviants, where you can manipulate the world using your fingers on the back and control your characters in other games. Now, it is kind of unnatural and uncomfortable at first once you start using it, because this is the first time probably you ever use a device with it. But over time, you will start to get the hang of it. And it can, can be very useful because it frees up the screen on the front, um, so your fingers aren't blocking it. Uh, and then just provides another dynamic to certain games. But again, this is kind of wait and see to see how developers actually use this in games and take advantage of it fully. Time you'll find the ARM Cortex A9 quad core processor. It has built in microphone and GPS. Also, does have the six axis motion sensor. And you can also get either the Wi Fi or the 3G version of the PlayStation Vita. And that 3G also does Wi Fi as well. But here in the United States, the 3G is going to be going through ATT. And this is the uh, 3G version that I'm reviewing for this video. So, overall, I would say the hardware for the Vita is pretty doggone good. I like the control layout. The touch pad on the back is a nice addition. Um, but one thing the Vita is missing though, it doesn't have any built in um, internal storage so you have to buy um, separate the the Sony uh, specific memory cards for the Vita which can get pretty pricey I mean 32 gigabytes will run you about a hundred bucks so that's a lot of money for those but other than that I would say the Vita has some pretty nice hardware all right, now it's going to talk about the OS on the PlayStation Vita. Now, I'm not a huge fan of this bubble type of layout, and I'm still not totally used to it yet, but it does get the job done. And all these little things represent an application or a setting or a game that you do have on here. And you can rearrange these to your liking if you tap and hold on them. Uh, now you can move them around. Also, too, from this same screen, you can change the the background color of the screen uh, to a picture that you're taking with the uh, the cameras or to one of these other predetermined images there. Now, if you slide up and down, you'll be able to access the different pages of your um, little bubbles there. And also, too, if you slide to the right, you'll be able to see all the open uh, applications that you do have running. Now, if you simply want to close one of these out, you simply tap from the top right-hand corner, and it will close that out off the screen. And also, too, if you do hit the PlayStation Home button, uh, it will bring up all the other uh, open applications that you do have and has a quick little access point to get back to the home screen. Now, looking at the top middle of the screen, you can also be able to see all the open applications or different games that you do have open. They each have this little icon there, which is pretty convenient. Now, the top right-hand corner, you'll find this little bubble here, and that's going to be your notification hub where all your notifications will show up there. So it'll let you know if people are playing nearby to you or if you have friend requests and different things like that. Now, within the OS itself, you'll find different things like a party application that allow you to talk to your friends using the microphone and also then challenge them to a game if you wanted to. And also, they do have an application called Near where it'll help you find different people who have PlayStation Vitas near to you. And now you can interact with them and see their games and different things like that. And also, too, the remote play for it is pretty nice, um, which will allow you to play people like somebody has the Wipeout game on the PlayStation 3 and you have the Wipeout game on your PlayStation Vita. Now you can challenge them head-to-head -head in multiplayer as well. So that cross 
platform gaming is present here with the PlayStation Vita 2. Now the Vita does also have the PlayStation Store where you can download and you can rent movies or TV shows and you can get music and also too you can get games from the, the older PSP game systems. You can download those games into your Vita and also too you can download the new games for the Vita uh, that is going to be cheaper since it is a digital version onto your Vita if you wanted to. Of course you're going to have to have a memory card. Um, but then all this content that you do download or if you want to get content onto your Vita you can use the Content Media Manager. So that's its own application on the Vita itself and plus it's something you can download whether it's for the PC or the Mac. You can download the Content Media Manager. Now you can take off and put on uh, photos and music and videos and game saves and all that stuff as well. And now let's move on to the most important piece of this review, and yes, that is the games. How do the games stack up on the PlayStation Vita? I will say for a launch day lineup, they had an awesome lineup of games, ranging from racing games to sports games to action games. They had different games like Little Deviants, which really took advantage of the touchpad on the back, Ultimate Marvel vs. Capcom 3 as far as fighting. They had racing with uh, Wipeout 2048, and then you had Uncharted Golden Abyss, which is probably the must-have game for the Vita because it gives you a very similar experience to the same game that's on the PlayStation 3 as far as the overall game. Gameplay. Now, Sony hinted that the PlayStation Vita will get you close to console-like graphics when they first announced the Vita about a year or two ago. So my expectations were very, very high as far as the graphics quality. Now, I will say that I'm not disappointed, but it's definitely not on the same level as the PlayStation 3. Now, Uncharted looked really awesome. I love the anima animations. They look very similar to what you'll find on the console. I will say the lighting effects are really awesome in that game. Then you move to a game like Wipeout 2048, which is only moving at 30 frames per second, but it really gives you a good sense of speed and um, just the overall level detail in that game as you're whipping around the track. Uh, it's really amazing. And then the OLED screen on this uh, PS Vita does a really good job and does a lot of these games justice. So I will say that the graphics quality of these games are pretty solid. And again, the launch lineup was awesome, but the rest of 2012 was going to be pretty good. They have games like Killzone lined up, Call of Duty, Little Big Planet, uh, Madden, of course, and also Ninja Gaiden is going to be coming out to it, or Ninja Gaiden, however you're supposed to say it. It's going to be coming out for the PlayStation Vita this year. However, I do have a couple of issues with the Vita. One, no built-in storage. It's not a good thing. They're forcing the body's memory cards. I think they could have provided at least two gigabytes of built-in storage for game saves and things like that. So if you are planning on downloading movies and downloading games to these little memory cards for the Vita, it will get pretty pricey for you. Now, also to the analog sticks, I think they can be just a little bit bigger, um, but that's not a big, huge complaint. And then other than that, I would say the just the loading times for some of the games. But after all that is said and done, the PlayStation Vita is a really solid gaming device, and I think it is the best portable gaming device out there for you right now. And they can continue this momentum of these games that are coming out for it for 2012 and beyond and really keep these developers on here. I think the Vita is going to be something that's going to be a really good investment for people who want the best portable gaming experience while you're on the go, on the plane, or, or in your car, different things like that. So again, they have 3G and Wi-Fi versions. If you just want the base Wi-Fi only version, that starts at $250. And again, I think it's a really good price for this... Uh, device and i think you won't be disappointed with it so that's my total review but before we head out of here guys it's going to take one let's look at our sponsor for this video and today's sponsor is Jack Threads. Jack Threads is a nice place to get really cool clothes for a low price. And I'm talking about brands like Kid Robot, Hurley, and Stussy, where you can get watches, you can get t-shirts, get jeans, shoes, a whole bunch of stuff for a very, very low price, up to 80% off on some of the stuff, which is not a bad deal at all. But this is an invite-only club. But if you want to get in right now, you can go to jackthreads.com forward slash SKB and start shopping and getting some good clothes. All right, thanks for watching this video, guys. Please leave a comment down below about what you think about the PlayStation Vita. How does it stack up to the DS and the 3DS and all that stuff? Anyway, guys, thanks for watching, and I will catch you later. Peace.